Hello and welcome to another attempt to stream to see if Twitch is allowing me to stream without dropping frames. So in advance already, apologies to any drop frames that are there. Please note that that's an issue on Twitch's side, not on my side. And unfortunately, I cannot do anything to fix it at this moment. So without further ado, just jump ourselves into the game where it seems like Cuscade1xbet.com is uh, the new sponsor for OSG. We know Oslik Gaming. They have been playing in the previous series of Star Series and they haven't been doing all too well. But they're going to try to get in right now because, of course, we're watching the qualifiers for Star Letters Star Series. So that is indeed the top ladder for Star Letters Star Ladder. And uh, one one team can, extra, can join. There were 64 teams at the start of today. Uh, we are in the quarterfinals, so these two teams only have a couple more steps to go before they can call themselves a new Star Series competitors of course that is also the series on where you can find yourself all the top teams in Europe and of course the land finals in Kiev etc etc so we're gonna see what these two teams bring us we still have Batrider and IO in the pool and that doesn't happen very often we do have an abandoned band out just like we saw previous game with a Nagasair and Alchemist and Lifestealer band out as well so this is basically saying you know what you can have IO or Batrider as long as we can have the other so we're gonna see which one of these, uh, well, we already see one, I guess the bad rider is gonna go to do some gaming. We have the IO picked up by Cascade, they wanna play with that one, they wanna know what they what they can do with it, they wanna show what they can do with it, rather. And we're gonna see Dusa probably picking up the bad rider, Ten seconds. and any other hero they wanna accompany with that, and maybe even, I mean, sometimes we even see a CK or some combination with an IO picked up by the opponent team, just to deny it to the ones with the IO, but... Not quite sure if that's going to be something that we'll see here today. Do so in the meantime. I mean, they're taking their time. They're taking it to bonus time. The downside is, I mean, if you have a bat rider available, like, what if you don't have a strategy formed around it? What if you don't have a player that is a super strong bat rider player? You know, it's it's all relative so they decide to not go for the bat rider decide to give that away if cascade want to have it that is but we have a visage and a nix assassin picked up instead and of course those two are a combination of supports that are very very strong and that can make a lot of things happen here on the map and of course it can make a lot of ganks happen as well if they want to uh, want to try that out we've got od and io by cascade so od and io the combination itself is not that strong until later on at least but OD super strong in the mid lane and because they were the ones to pick up the last hero before we jump ourselves into the next banning phase, they are also the ones that can decide that they can ban out the counters towards the OD, which of course one of them is already banned out, which was the life sealer, but the Razor is a strong counter towards it as well and they don't want to face the Tinker either. So we still have the CK banned out, one of the heroes that you can see combined up with the IO very often. We still have the Bat Rider in the pool, but both teams so far decided to just forget about that one for now. So we'll see. Well, they go for next. We'll see if, if the bat rider makes it through, because that would be a first for me in a while, that we actually see a bat rider just completely ignored. We still have a dark seer in the pool as well, also a hero that we don't normally see ignored. Of course, Dooza right now can pick up a mid, or sorry, pick up a hero and ban out a hero straight away, like ban out right one right now and then pick up one straight away. Bat rider and dark seer both can do the same kind of role, going in the jungle, going on the off lane. So that's going to be something they are going to have to weigh out, like which one they want to pick up, if they want to indeed pick and ban, a pick one and ban one. On the other side, how well can a bat rider do up against an OD? Not really all that well if he goes mid. So they end up banning out the darks here. Still have the bat rider in the pool. Nature's Prophet picked up by Dusa Gaming. Uh, by the way, I can link you. I'm not gonna actually. If you want the brackets, I'm sure someone in the chat can accommodate you. I'm gonna try to not touch any buttons outside my dota just this is not jinx it just to not jinx the frame drops just in case uh but you can find it on starladder.tv so you can find their dota 2.starladder.tv that's where you can find it one of the newest posts Five let's see what C cascade is going to be going for i mean they still need an offlaner and a carry and perhaps a jungle hero or support whichever they want to have they know that they're going to be up against a visitor and an assassin which could potentially be a very strong 
trial lane, so they need to have a carry that can deal with that or a support that can deal with that. So that is indeed a gyrocopter that can definitely deal with that. If someone comes close, Rocket Barrage will be there, Flat Cannon to force everybody away. And IO and Gyrocopter are actually a fairly decent combination. Not to jump around the map and gank people, but just because of that overcharge, so incredibly powerful. And IO works well together with Gyrocopter, or together with carries regardless. Of course, that is because he can just stick to the carry and basically have a way in into a fight whenever needed. So no longer needing to stick with your team just in case a team fight breaks out and you need to be there. No, you can just continue farming until you're needed to be there and then I will relocate you into the fight. And I might only be there for about 10 seconds, but that's okay. That's all that needs to be done. We have an Earthshaker, one of the safest supports that you can think of. One Fissure and your entire initiation plan can go to hell. I mean, just you can't walk over it. You, you get stunned if you want to try to land a, a follow-up disable or something like that. And your opponent's team heroes can just walk away. Your your exit gets blocked. It's it's a very powerful hero for sure. Oh yeah, I have a Dragonite picked up by Dusa Gaming. I, I mean, I like the Dragonite, but I'm not really sure how he'll do up against the OD. That will be a very tough lane. Tough lane for the Dragonite, that is. Dragonites overall, they are used to... Sitting on low mana, they bottle crow already, even without an OD. The downside comes when OD is able to get Dragonite below the threshold of mana that he has to land a Dragon's Breath. And that's the only one that he can get last hit with if he's close to that OD. We have a Clockwork Band out by Dusa. Still the Bear Rider is completely ignored. We have a Weaver Band out by Cascade. Two offlane heroes removed from the pool, or at least two solo lanes removed from the pool. We're gonna see what Dusa has next up their sleeve. I mean, they still need a carry. Assuming Nature's Prophet offlane jungle, Dragonite mid, and then a trial lane Nyx Assassin Visage. I would really much like to have the Nature's Prophet on a solo safe lane and then an aggressive trial lane, but with an Earthshaker there, not really that ideal. We have another Doom. Wow. The second Doom that we see today. That's interesting. Nice uh, nice hero to have. Very strong against the OD. Super strong against the OD. He needs his orb attack. Like OD has got some some period like you have got spikes, right? You have got this you can you can imagine a, a kind of a graph when a hero is strongest in the game and least strong, etc. That for carries, it's it's a it's a line that goes uh, goes up. For supports, it's a line that goes a little bit down. For an OD, it's actually a bit spiky because it first is strong, and at some point when opponent teams get BKBs, it's not as strong anymore, but then later on when the BKB durations drop, then it's going to be going up a little bit higher. Now with a Doom, you can just make sure that that peak that he has before everybody gets BKBs is just lowered because you can't cast spells anyway, even if there's no BKB. So that's a strong one to have for sure for Dusa Gaming. And uh, we're gonna see what Cascade has to answer to that one. We still need an offlaner, that's basically it. So it would be quite funny if they still pick up a bear rider at uh, the last pick. I keep thinking like, oh my god, did I not see them banning out the bat rider in the first phase? So I keep looking back, but it's really, it, it's just ignored. Abaddon banned out over bat rider. And Abaddon is of course one of those heroes that you might want to ban out. And um... Just because you do, you're not used to playing against it. And uh, don't get me wrong, we've seen a battle win already. And we've seen him being fairly strong and he just makes everything fairly tanky, does the same thing. Or well, imagine if there is in a battle and a tree and protector and a dazzle. It's gonna be insane. You're gonna be living so long. Anyways, uh, he's just uh, a lot of people are just not used yet to play against him. Same thing goes for, uh, for the troll warlord, I guess. Or the Elder Titan. Timber Saga is picked up by Cascade, so that will be their offlane or at least their soul laner. And we'll see how they do. Of course, uh, by the way, for uh, if slash when I go uh, start dropping frames, for all people that were here when that happened, you know what's up. Please inform the rest of the people that start complaining about dropping frames when that actually happens. I'm, go I'm gonna assume it will happen in a team fight or so, whenever Twitch feels like they're overloaded. But um, just so you are aware.
Um, just so you can make other people aware. That would be awesome. Thank you. So we're gonna see Dusa. They are on the dire side this game. They've got Half Heart playing the Doom. We've got Legion playing the Dragonite. And it will be Visage playing or played by Capron. That will leave Unstable playing the next assassin and then Mip the best playing the Nature's Prophet. Oh god, I gotta sneeze. I look at the light, it's just. Ah! Sorry, I can't introduce the other team just yet because. Oh, wow, that's over. It's fixed, thank you. Obi Wan Banan will take on the IO for OSD or Cascade on the Radiant team. We've got some dots playing the Air Shaker. We have got ourselves a mid laner. It is a name that I cannot pronounce. I actually wouldn't say that this is Chinese letters, but it's letters that I cannot pronounce. It is playing the OD. And it is Judo that plays the Gyrocopter. And then on the top lane, it's Big Nam playing the Timber Saw. And he'll be on the off lane. So we got ourselves pretty standard lanes. As in, just safe trial lane for both teams by the looks of it. And just having uh, maybe or some roaming supports. We're going to hope for that, of course. Roaming supports are the best. Especially from Castor point of view. Because more kills are better. Let's see what people are sharing right now. Depths. Ah, that's kind of cool. Okay, so we're having depths right here. Uh, thank you to Unstable, the next assassin that's able to sh accommodate that one. Unstable, who already has a smoke in his inventory. So that's going to be uh, nice, because that's going to be get trying to gank mid lane. And of course, that's something that you want to try and do against OD. OD, in theory, very tough to gank hero, because he'll just ask from prison one of the two gankies, perhaps. And he should be able to run away. It's 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 very tough to actually able be able to gank the OD. You need to have some fine coordination. And, um, and maybe a bit of a mistake from the OD as well. But they're going to try it nonetheless. Perhaps they're going to rotate towards the... Uh, or behind the tier one tower to try and get the timber saw, but then again, good luck trying to gank a timber saw. He'll timber chain away, and he has got his unstable, or sorry, his uh, his uh, reactive armor, and then then he is home safe. He's actually also gonna have a support apparently, Earthshaker making his way top. Doesn't even have wards or anything, just just to check, uh, just to sit there and, and sit behind the timber saw. In the meantime, bottom lane Gyrocopter won't need that much help because he's just up against a, a Nature's Prophet who will probably be rotating into the jungle at some point. Invisibility Room picked up by the Visage. Big Num did see that. They also saw the next assassin here though. They're gonna try to harass him away. Maybe actually able to, Yeah, Tether, extra movement speed. And there is an Impale picked up by the next so no Spike Carapace to try and uh, get himself out, but he is home safe regardless. In the meantime, Gyrocopter. Judo, having to deal with uh, some annoying treants. This treant is pulling the the wave back, while these will probably pick up, or they will actually block the way, block the camp, successfully. So nicely done by Judo, though. Luring the creep wave past the tower on the other side into the creep wave of his own, and he is out. He is good. Slow here up on the earth shaker. Of course, we have to keep an eye on this top lane. In theory, nobody should really die because Earthshaker, like I said, is, is such a strong anti-ganker that it's fairly tough to, to actually gank something that's being protected by an Earthshaker. But Earthshaker himself, is, if he's out of position, then that's going to be a pretty tough one to... Uh, or easy one to pick off. Big Num also, like I said, not really easy to gank. Uh, he is by himself right now though, and he gets impaled, gets slowed, the Fisher tries to help out, there comes the Timber Chain, the Fisher's actually blocking his path home, eats himself a tango, still tries to run, has gotten on the Timber Chain, just needs some trees, doesn't need them anyway, they know they can't have him anymore, and they back off, in the meantime, this might not be the best thing for, uh, the best, but, uh, he actually doesn't die, so, so far so good, I guess he also got harassed here on this bottom lane, has got himself an IO for that extra movement speed of Judo, also something that he has to be very careful with. In the mid lane also, a pretty volatile lane, like all lanes something might happen at any moment, because this Dragonite, he's gonna get harassed so much by this OD in the meantime, wait a second, yeah, he's gonna be okay. 
hiding behind this tier 2 or next to his tier 2 as we have Obi-Wan Banan actually being uh, completely locked in now. He eats himself a tree, he eats himself a way out. But all lanes have got a potential of uh, bringing down a hero for first blood at the moment. It's very tricky and I mean it can go either way as well. I mean one person can overextend here. I mean this IO taking a lot of tower damage here already. I mean this is fairly risky for him but he eats himself out. He's got a creep wave chasing him down though and he doesn't have boots so he's not faster than the creep wave. In the meantime Judo t does his best to try and uh, harass Major Problem. This could be first blood. Yes this should be first blood. There we go. It is a creep that gets the last hit though so Judo not really getting anything and IO actually still getting an assist for that one. But it is Judo that gets the last hit in the end, or at least on the bottom lane, Nature's Prophet goes down. So other lanes can maybe have some of the pressure relieved to not be first blood and be maybe a little bit extra safe. Dragonite in the meantime, 8 for 2 last hits while the OD is sitting on 15 to 8, that's a big difference. Big difference for sure. And he has only got 65 mana, so as I said during the draft, he doesn't have a breathe fire anymore. So he can bottle charge all you want, bottle crow all you want, but you won't get enough mana anymore to last it. In the meantime, Nature's Prophet having a bit of issue here once again. The spirits are flying, might be able to get the kill here. And one more spirit needed. Jericopter gets it with a flat gun, and very nicely done. And that's gonna be the second kill of the game, second kill on the Nature's Prophet here on this bottom lane. Meantime, the Timber saw on the top lane. He's got five last hits, which is actually pretty decent, considering he is on an on a lane where there is a trial lane against him. So they're gonna go actually for the Earth Shaker. That's the best choice, though. As I said, he is the one that probably will die from the two. If you go on one, you can go for the Earth Shaker. You should always go for the Earth Shaker because Timber saw is gonna get away. Normally. In the meantime, Dragonite sitting in the mid lane still pretty tough. No supports coming in to help gank him. And he just has to deal with it. OD though can't really kill him until he's level 6. So that ha is helping Legion out. But look at his experience. He's level 4. There's almost a full level difference between the two of these. Level 5 versus level 4. Of course almost level 5 for Legion. But it's still pretty pretty tough to deal with. Dyer's I did introduce everybody. Yeah I did. Attack. Cool. Just curious for a second. OD gets himself another rune in the meantime on a top lane, Timber Chain tries to get some harassment done here up on heart, Half Heart, but not really working out as intended. Half Heart so far, highest on last hits. He is 30 for 6. Higher than Gyrocopter. Actually, this Gyrocopter, considering that Nature's Prophet can't really do too much on this lane, Gyrocopter only has 19 last hits. That's what you get for chasing down kills, so that cost him quite a few last hits. Of course he got the kill on the assist, which is awesome, but it's still... A tricky thing to have to deal with. I mean, you kind of have to be having some more last hits than this, I feel like, but it's okay. It happens. Judo. Uh, we know him from previous season. We know that he is an insane last hitter on the Luna. He was actually the, the first game that we ever, that I ever saw from Judo was in Star Series, and he was playing. Uh, he was playing a Luna, and I know that I was casting with Vickermond, and he just he didn't miss a single last hit. For the first 10 minutes, you know, you have the 82 uh, creep threshold in 10 minutes. He got that. Or at least he got above 80. Which is pretty impressive. So that's how I remember that he should be last sitting a little bit more. I was expecting more from him at least. But we'll see how far, how much he can do in the mid game and in the, in the late game as well. Because of course, oh wait a second, cold on it actually misses. And the best is already out. It might be man in black. Dyer's bottom tower is Dragonite level six with 13 mana to his name. It's quite sad. And that that Tenantis Eclipse is gonna hurt a lot. Because he's missing he that he has negative intellect. Yeah, that's quite Dyer's painful. Rune being picked attack. up by unstable invis rune. Very important Dyer's one as well, because otherwise Earthshaker might have had it. And that wouldn't have been a pretty sight. I in the meantime level 4. I was saying something before this happened. Oh yeah, because Gyrocopter, we can compare him a little bit towards the Doom, right? In terms of uh, last hits and in terms of farms. The thing is, about a, about a Gyrocopter compared to a Doom, is that Doom needs... I think a little bit more before he can do the same kind of carrying as a Gyrocopter can do. 
Oh, but he might be already going for this though. All you need is a couple of supports. Fisher comes in, try and help out, but he can't timber chain away this time. Soul Soldier comes in, that's gonna be getting a kill for Capron. His visage able to get the last hit with his Soul Assumption. So have Heart's Doom, making sure that Timber Saw could not get away. And I'm meaning, I'm meaning, of course, carry wise, item wise. It's it all comes down to personal preference. But if this Doom is gonna have, for example, a Shadow Blade. Then he'll be able to have some impact, but the first item that the Jericopter will go for is, is a BKB by looks fit, picks himself up on a work club as well. And that is gonna have a bit more impact than uh, the or overall team impact than the Shadow Blade of the Doom. But we'll see how things pan out for now. In the meantime, Dragonite still having the toughest time of everybody in the game, I feel like. Maybe with the Nature's Prophet combined, but Nature's Prophet has taken Sanctuary in, in the jungle. And Nature's Prophet is one of those heroes that overall, Fisher goes down again, big numb. Timber chains away, in comes Obi-Wan Banan as well. They want to go for the Doom, the Spirits might be able to get him. Yep, there he goes, not the Spirits, but it's big numb in the end. They want to go for more. Can they go for more? And they can't go for Unstable. Unstable. Does have a, a little bit of mana left soon. It is going to be Io that goes down first. Big Numb still alive in this one. But I think he should be finding himself a way out of here soon. Because he is dropping pretty low. Maybe if he had Whirling Dash he could get himself a kill there extra. But he didn't. He doesn't. And he gets himself out via an exit route on the sidelines. It's a still fair trade though for Oslite Gaming or for Cascade on the Radiant side. Of course they got a Doom. For an IO. I think Earthshaker died in that as well. Yeah, it's still two supports for uh, for Doom, but still Doom. It's pretty decent to have that one down. Maybe not all that favorable with getting two heroes there, but on the bright side, I mean, earlier kills mean less. I mean, they killed off a hero that was level 5 and one that was level 3, so that didn't give them that much experience. Of course, they got the gold. But experience wise, that's uh, a little bit more experience. And that's gonna be a lot of experience for the Io. He is now level 6. Dragonite, of course, not able to survive this. I mean, we knew that he is losing the lane. He's just a matter of time before OD actually is able to kill him off. And double damage runes definitely help out a lot. Here comes a relocate. They wanna go for this Nyx Assassin. It is just. And Io though, by himself, they just really want to take down his Nyx Assassin. In comes the Urn Charge, and that should be able to get himself a kill. Obi-Wan Bana will be out again in 4, 2, 1. There he goes, as it is uh, going to be Capron that gets himself out of life. TP in from the Dragonite, want to go for Judo, that's going to be a kill. And Io came back in from the side as well, trying to help out, it goes down as well. That's Dusa taking it back, killing off the carry of Cascade. A pretty big deal, of course Dragonite died, fair enough. Now Doom getting himself another kill, gets killed off forward, OD making a quick relocate or a quick rotation to the top lane, gets himself a kill there, so this OD is doing great. But Dusa definitely not out of this field just yet. Let's take a look at who killed how many people, because we have got Visage who is just pretty well uh, connected right now. Connected to kills that is, because he's 2 0 too. he's been in 4 out of the 6 kills, that is most of, of everybody of his team. And of course he hasn't died yet. We still have Io that's been involved in 5 out of the 6, ki six kills of his team. I mean, that's definitely Radiant's impressive as well. But he died once, as we just saw. Invisibility. But of course OD. The one that has most farm. Hasn't died yet. And now got 2 kills two na kills to his name. It's impressive. They want to go for this Urshaker. There's a sent word here down, but it doesn't matter if you're in prison. In comes a stun. There comes the Impale first though, Dragon Tail as well, Earthshaker is in a lot of trouble here, tries to run but goes down before he can do anything, Soul Assumption, OD dra drops dead, that is, those are rather important kills, we have now Nyx Assassin level 6, Visage level 7 and killing off the highest farmed, highest level hero in the game, that is something that definitely matters. In the meantime, of course, the bottom tower did end up going down earlier on. Judo able to take the last hit. He's still building towards his BKB. And I keep that, having the feeling that I am not able to finish my sentences. It's really annoying. So we have got Doom. No, sorry, I was gonna. I was talking about Nature's Prophet that was earlier. That was a while back, but I wanted to still say it. Because he has got his hand as Midas just now. This is his first charge that he uses. And of course, he's had a tough time on the bottom lane. But now that he has his hand of Midas, he should be able to catch up. Unstable with his Vendetta, looking for a pickup, doesn't get the IO, might now get the IO, might be a better target, in comes the Impale, they want to just go for it, Familiar Sons can be there as well, and that is gonna be one IO, down, Capron, able to take the last hit for that one, Familiar's of course helping out, might not be able to get Judo, but it doesn't matter, doesn't matter at all.
kill is a kill at this point. In comes a Doom upon a Timber Saw. Sprout comes up, Nature's Prophet coming in to help out, doing some extra damage. In comes a TP though, it is Judo that comes to help out. Rocket Barrage will try to force him back, and an Anai coming in from Judo. Nicely done for him. And it is Half Heart that tries to get himself out of the rocket that is chasing him down. We have a mechanism up for the OD. Some solid team fight perhaps for them so far. I mean, the mechanism is not really built yet. Well, it's starting to be built yet. Actually, that's a medallion. No, then it's not really built yet on anybody up on Dusa. I mean, for, for um, mechanism carriers, they don't really have that many options. I mean, Visage is definitely an option. Nyx Assassin perhaps as well. And otherwise, Nature's Prophet. As uh, we have got Nature's Prophet still needing to use his Hand of Midas. It's quite sloppy that he's not having that. I mean, the first charges for the Hand of Midas are the most important because it, it determines how fast you get yourself ahead. Later on, you may be getting a little bit sloppy with it. But for now, he needs every cooldown that he has. Oh well. But, I mean, they don't really have a natural mechanism builder, so they have to kind of sacrifice someone's item progression for that one. And the question is, who are they going to do it with? And are they going to do it with one of the supports? Because if so, that's not really going to be ideal, because that's going to be a very late mechanism, because supports are just not getting that much from, unless there are a lot of kills in the game. Um, to be fair, I'm not disappointed by the amount of kills, don't get me wrong, but it can definitely be a little bit higher. If you want to get a fast mechanism. And of course the reason why I'm hammering down on the mechanism is because it's just fairly important. If you're going to be having an eclipse dropped on you, you need to be able to heal up afterwards or a fissure or an echo slam or standing in a chakram. And you know it's all fine. You can take some AoE damage as long as you can heal up again afterwards with that mechanism. Otherwise you're just going to get killed off straight away. Gyrocopter finished up his uh, recipe for the BKB. No... Minthra Hammer just yet. No, this is just sentry words for the IO. And actually, this Nyx Assassin looking for a kill, looking for some blood. In comes the Impale, in comes a Dragon Tail as well. That's gonna be Gyrocopter down the drain. Ownage Cold. Dusa looking strong in this one. Gold Graph that started out in favor of Cascade because they just had, uh, of course, the first bloods going their way. Another. Another. Doom. Big Numb. Eating them all. This time with a little bit more support though. And he's actually sticking around. I'm not needing to get the nine. He goes up on his aggressor. It's already Nature's Prophet that already went down. Now looking for the Doom. His Scorched Earth is already gone. And he is boxed in. Good luck trying to get out right now. Chakram already used. And that's going to be one Doom dead. OD with the last hit. Two heroes dead on the side of Dusa. Not out of this just yet. Keep in mind, by the way, that one of the two, one of the twelve kills on the side of Dusa is a deny, as the uh, Legion is uh, trying to run himself away. It looks to be able to be quite successful in that judo. Should be faster, of course, especially with the tether, and he has face boost as well. Tries to get it with the flat cannon. Golan comes in as well, and it's not even needed. He gets the kill, and that's gonna be another kill going the way of Cascade. They're taking it back slowly but steadily, making it happen. Still also, of course, OD and Gyrocopter ahead in terms of net worth. It's just that their supports are behind the supports of Dusa. That's the, that's the thing that's made the difference right now in terms of gold. It's the supports of one being higher than the supports of the other, and then the carries of the other being lower uh, than the other. As we have got Nyx Assassin picking up an Earthshaker, that was a fairly simple uh, gank and spank combination. Familiar is helping out. Quite nice... Uh, Help. Of course, the impale setting up for the. Why is he stuck on there? Tether towards his target. Well, good luck with that. But uh, impale helping out with setting up for the familiar stuns. For the touchdown. Or stone form, it's called. First stuff being built by the OD who pops his invis rune that he just picked up. Let's see how far they can get with this. If they're actually able to get somewhere with this, because right now it doesn't look like a skate actually wants to fight. It's more Dusa that's trying to initiate those fights. Though, to be fair, late game, they're not even looking that bad. I mean, Nature's Prophet, one of the strongest heroes in a late game. Especially, I mean, it has split push potential, carry potential. You have got a disable that can be blocked by a BKB or at least a Sprout. Of course, you can't target it anymore, but if you're skilled enough, you should be able to still get it. Let's see. There is a Sent here down already, so they will see that. Oh, Judo. Scouts them out, tries to fly himself out of this. In comes Unstable as well, running for his life towards the tier 1 tower. They're not gonna chase that. 
They're giving up, they're backing out. That's gonna be a vendetta almost over again. Going mid instead, relocate top. They wanna go for half heart. Gyrocopter here as well. In comes Big Num. Timber chains himself to make sure that half heart sl gets slowed down a little bit. He doesn't have an escape, apart from being invisible, actually. That's a pretty good escape. In comes a Dragonite as well. The relocate back out. And that's gonna be one. Very, very troublesome. Big Num, the Timber saw, tries to get himself out, but in comes the TP. Oh, in comes the TP. That's gonna be good for him. And that's gonna be a nice one. Nicely done also with the timber chain combination of the TP. A lot of rotations coming in for that Medusa. Not getting anything out of it, it's quite painful. But they might be getting at least a tier 1 tower out of it. Fisher still went down to try and slow them down, but Earthshaker on, its, on his own can't really stop this from happening. Maybe Cascade can get something in return though. That's gonna be something that would Dyer's be worth it. Radiance top tower is under attack. Big Num still getting stunned. Has got the timber chain to get away though. Should be fine. Tower goes down. Doom picks it up. Doom who has got the Shadow Blade ready. Another Shadow Blade ready for the Nature's Prophet. And this could be cause for some even extra aggression coming up from Doom. So though they have been the ones to try and find the fights all the time. In comes a call down. Doom already trying to make his way over. Getting slowed down for a little bit. The spirits are hitting. They know where someone's there. They turn on the BKB. The Shadow Blade is about to end. But they're not gonna try and... Turn and burn, which I was kind of hoping for, but rightly so. They would have been outnumbered. And no TPs were coming in, so... It was, however, the first BKB charge of the Gyrocopter, so that's a 10 second BKB. Yeah. One can argue how useful that actually was. Because, I mean... Doom doesn't get stopped by BKB. It, it wasn't useful at all, basically. This is a panic button from the, net, from the Gyrocopter, in a way. Tier 1 tower, last one standing on the side of Dusa, will be going down quite shortly, especially since nobody's coming in to defend it. Dyer's top tower so far still one tier 1 tower standing on the map though, that's the one on the side of Cascade, who is gonna have some company. For most teams we have three here of Dusa, and we have got two here for now, for Cascade. Let's see how far they can get, and if they're actually gonna try, because that's, that's a whole different story. And they're Dyer's not gonna try, popping the mana boots. Attack. Maybe trying to go for rep round, and that's actually the case. Or is it? Wasting time right now. See, they just they just saw a warp disappear. Now that's it. That's very important because it was a sentry ward. It doesn't give that much vision, but they only see, you only see a warp disappear. They go mid instead. They go for open one bottom, and they go for the doom for the gyrocopter. That is gyrocopter tries to run. I already dead, and there goes judo as well. Two kills. Two dominating heroes on the side of Dusa, both the Nyx Assassin and the Visage. And that means that we indeed have two supports that are right now dominating. Both have four kills, both have four assists. Only the Nyx Assassin died once, which is fair enough, but these are some pretty heavy hitters on the side of Dusa. I've been in eight kills out of the fifteen, both of them. And haven't died since their four kills. Roshan now also goes the way of Dusa, really nicely done. We have got OD with a mechanism and four staff ready and 16 on a goal to boot us. We have a pause coming off from Obi-Wan Banner because we've got a disconnect. Io sitting in the base with his relocate off cooldown and also his uh, internet down on cooldown or a game crashed. We've all been there. Game sometimes crash it happens. In the meantime, let's take a look at the gold grab real quick. We have got, of course, Cascade still in the lead. Mostly due to the tower advantages. They are actually two towers ahead right now because the tier 2 bottom is also down on the side of Dusa. But two towers is, in theory, about 3000 gold. If you accumulate everything, including the last hit on it. 3,000 gold, they're actually not 3,000 gold ahead, so in some trouble, but that's, or at least uh, a little bit behind, but that's also because of the kills that are done by Dusa. Uh, Experience-wise, it is Dusa that is uh, calling the shots, though. I mean, look at that difference, 7,500. We are 20 minutes in. Of course, the main difference that we're going to see that on right now is the supports. I mean, I just said that those two supports were dominating. Earthshaker is still level 7, and now it doesn't really matter for an Earthshaker because his Fisher is at level 4, and as long as he can get that off, he's fine. 
But one thing that will matter, and will also matter for Earthshaker soon, is, is the level 11s. There is nobody below level 11 on Doosan. Level 10 versus level 11 is just a big thing. You have got yourself extra familiars, the easier to cast uh, Vendetta, or at least easier to cast. It's, it is harder to throw it away, rather. You don't really need a specific setup before you can actually use it. So, it definitely makes a difference. Also, of course, there is still the difference of the Dragonite compared to the OD. But, yeah, that's still pretty, uh, like, experience-wise, pretty well in favor of Dusa. I mean, yeah, the Dragonite is not doing as well, but the Doom and the Nature's Prophet and the supports just make sure that his loss is kind of nullified completely. And of course, Timbersaw also is still not level 11, and his Chakram is actually very important in teamfights. We've got a smoke up for both teams, it seems. Yeah. Smoke for both teams, so both teams go inside their enemy's jungle, and both teams will not find anybody there because everybody is in their enemy's jungle. Uh, apart from OD. He's sitting mid. He's gonna farm. He might be in some trouble because of it, though. A ward plays behind the tower, so maybe if they don't get a kill, they might be able to go for a tower, but they back off for that one as well. Go mid instead. But everybody is missing from the map right now. It's very scary to show yourself. Though we have got Timberstar showing himself. And they are... Dusa is going for the OD. They know where he is. They're ready to doom him, impale him, and everything else. Or are they? Nah, they're worried it's a trap. Well, fair enough. There was no trap. This is something that often happens though, the two teams go for the smoke at the same time, it's just a few of the game, like right now, it, it's, 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 one, it's the time of the game when both teams feel like, okay, right now it's, it's kind of even at the moment, and we need to have a way to get an edge. So we need a smoke gank to make sure the game is in our favor again so we can determine the pace. Both teams feel the same way at that point, so both teams are able to, to, to just use a smoke. Tower still went down. It might be the best uh, when to push it down, so that's going to be another tier 1 tower down. Still making the towers 1 tower difference though, but Dusa gets some extra gold to their name, which is of course always nice. Talking about niceness. Nice ancient stack. Something that Dusa has not been doing. However, they do have a lineup to get it with, so... Uh, Cascade is now farming it, that's great, that's awesome, they need to continue doing this. They have to be worried, like, if they're going to continue stacking this, they have to be careful that it doesn't get stolen by Dusa, because that Dragonite can definitely take down Ancient Camp. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Tier 1 tower. Would Book Towers even again, but we might have Cascade actually looking for a fight. I mean, they were the ones to also start trying to look for a fight earlier on. Just a matter of finding the right initiation, maybe finding some mispositioning from one of the Radiance players. Tower will still go down, fortification is there, but... Radiance Looks like Cascade is just backing off to them, not even trying. And that will mean that we'll see Dusa back off. No initiation for them. It's it's just it's too even to try and risk anything right now. Because the person, the team the team that wins the next big team fight, and with winning I'm actually winning winning rather than fairly even team fight. The team that wins the next team fight will probably be ahead and might actually win the game. So it's very important that you know, you're the one that gets yourself the, the better positioning, knowing where everybody is. The one that basically call the shots that have the perfect way of starting off a fight. Coming from the high ground or coming from a smoke, element of surprise, all that jazz. So both teams want that. That means that if both teams don't really have it, they are going to try to either bait it out or they're just going to not fight. Oh, or they are going to try to find a fight. But it looks like the sentry word of the high ground might not have scouted, but at least... They're scared enough that they back off. They're just so careful. Hey, Strun, though, that might be leading for a good initiation. Nyx Assassin will pick it up. He's still sitting against Vendetta. Now it goes to the Dragonite. Also a strong in initiator because, of course, he has the Dragonite Dragon Tail in his Dragon form. Ancient's being taken down. They have got a ward of the high ground here. This visage is a bit... Yeah, he's careless, but he's fine. I was never worried. Familiar scouted out the enemy team as well, so that means that there's not going to be a fight just yet. Fisher will just try to slow the push down. You still have the ages though. 30 seconds before it goes away, so that's going to be 
Deuce and not fighting for another 30 seconds and probably not fighting, maybe not fighting even for the whole four and a half minutes because they want to just get the new ages and then only then go again. Two K gold now in favor of Dusa. They are the ones that are having the most control of the map. When we we look at the wards and we see that the Radiant team definitely have some control, fair enough. But Dusa has been able to farm inside the Radiant jungle, has been able to farm inside their own jungle, has been able to farm the lanes, and of course have got that Nature's Prophet that constantly uses Hannah Vitus and just keeps getting more and more items because he's he's gonna be so scary right now. Having this game go on for a longer period of time, I would actually put it in favor of Dusa purely for this Nature's Prophet that can commit. Com oh. We can get so much done on the map. Scythe so of Vice also being built by the OD, though. I say also because I'm assuming that that's also what Nature's Prophet is building. And it's gonna be, of course, something important the Disable. We have a Fisher on Cascade. We've got an Astron Prisman, Tether Stun, Chakram, and Cooldown, which is both slowed down. But in terms of pure disable, Fisher is really the only real targeted one without putting someone in danger. While on Tusa, you've got the Dragon Tail, you've got the Sprout, you've got the Impale. And that's already quite a lot. So disable is going to be very important for especially for Cascade. Then you need to have that extra hex to get rid of the Dragonite or get rid of the Doom. Make sure you kill the Doom before he casts his Doom, which of course is very important. BKB now also up on Dusa. As said at the start of the game, you've got for the OD a bit of a graph for when your hero is strongest. Right now, he is going to be in a little bit of trouble without that Hex because he needs to be able to Hex people so he can actually... Oh, in comes the Vendetta. I was going to say so he can actually... Initiate on the Dragonite and then make sure that there's not going to be a KBKB. There was a smoke up for both targets, for both teams. Looks like Unstoppable is pretending he's unstoppable. Gets an S from Prismate. Is there going to be another sentry? Is the question. They need another sentry. Pause! Oh my god, that is a disconnect for the Timber saw. That is pretty troublesome. Because he just Timber chained himself. I uh, wonder where he's going. If he's going to the other side of the river or not. Or if he's sticking there. Dragon Knight will be trying to cast his Dragon Tail. Uh, Io is gonna be getting like right there. He should be able to be in range. That's gonna be a kill There's a doom ready for the timber saw to make sure that he cannot timber chain away again And there's a mechanism up on the visage Who can just slow everybody down the threat zone. So I'm assuming that these three are staying alive But I'm assuming these two dead. That's gonna be my call, but we'll see how far they actually get They only have three here On the side of Dusa. Well, they are, they are five here on the side of Cascade. So if they turn around and you've got yourself a call down set of these Eclipse, it's, it's gonna hurt. However, 10 second BKBs on both targets and a mechanism will be able to create some extra sustainability for Dusa. I see the drawing on the minimap. They're actually assuming that there's gonna be people coming from the side. Nature's Prophet, of course, can TP in. He's already casted his ultimate that's already flying through on the top lane. Who am I missing? Next assassin. Oh yeah, he's sitting in the Astro Imprisonment. Almost forgot him about him. This is some this is a scenario where Cascade should run. Continue running, I should say, because of course they already started. Let's see how far they get. In comes a Dragon Tail. That's already Ayo uh, hey, dead. Down goes the OD as well. Echo Slam goes down. In comes a Doom up on the Big Num. OD actually still alive for now. We are having the Earthshaker being picked off though. Judo and Big Num still running for their lives. OD able to walk himself to the side. Can TP himself out of need be. Judo will go down and that's going to be three dead. And one very low. It's, it's a fight going the way of Dusa. We already decided it would go that way but... It's still quite painful to see. So quite sad also for the pause. Gives of course both teams the idea of what's going on. And then it's all the more ruthless. That you're already standing there knowing that you're gonna be the one to die. Radiance top tower is under attack. Radiance top oh, Doom on the wrong side of the fissure. Timber Chain comes in as well. He's invisible, but I don't think it matters that much. They know exactly where he is. He tries to TP himself out. Do they have enough damage to take him down? They don't! Radiance Doom lives! Is under attack. Maybe they can catch someone else. Fisher, oh, that's gonna be something else. 
a dominating streak ended, so some extra gold going towards the OD. Who gets 450 gold for that one. Very nice, but you would rather have to have the Doom. That Doom was so close to dying, but he lived. And we have pings coming out. And I mean, the tower still stands, but next time the push is happening, that will be a dead tower. Only 200 HP left, 206 to be exact. Double damage. I'm gonna have OD with the Hex complete. Niche Prophet. Hex complete as well, so that will be there in the next fight. So have Timbersaw having a Vanguard, realizing he's not gonna get his Bloodstone for now. So Vanguard is actually quite decent for him. Just to get some extra survivability. After all, you're assumed to be a tank, so you need to be a little bit tanky. And if you can't go for the big items, you need to have something before that happens. We have Gyrocopter going for Butterfly. He's actually fairly close, just needs about 800 gold. And he has got the Talisman of Evasion. Let's see if we can catch some new items. Looks like Visage is still gonna go for the third familiar, so that's an Aghanim Scepter for him. Assault Grass for has heart, have heart. And a Roshan again. For Dusa. Smoke up. Cascade knows this is happening. Wants to do something about it. How far can they actually go though? How far can they come? Not far enough. They're too late. Doom already has an Aegis. They're gonna continue fighting and comes a Doom upon the OD. Impaled. That's OD already. Burst it down. IO dropped as well. Hex up in Earthshake who gets picked up. Nyx Assassin still goes down to the Timberstar at the back end of the fight. Uh, right about here actually. It's in the middle of the fight. But that's... That was just... Ruthless. And that says Cascade. You're lacking... Some BKBs up on your OD. I mean, that was just... Bloodbath. Oh, I'm sorry for the sounds. But, uh, looks like we're gonna see... Dusa trying to make their way up the high ground. They've got the Aegis, they've got still the OD dead. If they can kill off another one right now, they at least make sure that Cascade can't go again. And they indeed... Pick up the Timrissa, still making sure that Cascade is with four, so they can't chase that, they can't fight that. But is Deuce actually gonna try and fight that? They're not, they're backing out. Sanity's Eclipse is too much risk, I mean it's still gonna hurt a lot. Not in everybody, definitely not, but it's risky. I wouldn't mind them to go for, uh, for just all mid and see how far they can get though. I mean with that Aegis you basically get yourself a, uh, a ticket to try that for free because you've got yourself a fail safe you got yourself an Aegis it's fine maybe you get some kills maybe you force out some buybacks make your enemy poorer more poor even though they're already quite poor especially compared to Dusa 10k gold in favor of Dusa experience craft is gonna also go on the way of Dusa no surprise there they are 17k experience behind and of course ex level wise yes Right now, the supports of Cascade are level 11, which is great. But the supports of Dusa are just a little bit higher. We have level 13, level 14, and especially Nature's Prophet. I mean, he is the guy that gave up first blood, died again afterwards. And he is he's had a very tough start. He didn't get that much experience, it was just sad. But then he got himself ahead of Midas, and then everything starts turning around again. That's just how it goes. That's how Nature's Prophets work. Living proof right here. 2800 gold already. We now also have a gem of true sight up on the Nyx assassin, or at least he bought it. I'm quite sure, curious who will carry it around. But that is just to make sure that there's not gonna be any map coverage for Cascade. That is that is their next plan, okay? You know you have you know you you're having the upper hand, you know you're doing okay. Next step, making sure your enemies is doing are doing even worse than it did before. So, like, just make sure they don't have any vision. No places to farm. Make it happen. And so far, they are making it happen. Everybody is sitting in their base. Waiting, sitting ducks. They're gonna go on the top lane again. Aghanim's ready before the vision. We saw him already spawning his three familiars, of course. 
Let's see how far they get. Of course, once again, this is a best of one only. Quarterfinals for the Star Ladder Star Series qualifier. Winner of this qualifier will be allowed in Season 7 for Star Series and will be joining the big teams and of course have that chance to go to Kiev perhaps. Well, tower goes down. Familiars pick it up. In come the stuns as well. BKB gets turned on by Judo and this is Dusa running for their lives. We already have the Aegis burning. Comes unstable. Tries to protect their carry at least. Success. Achieved. We also have got, of course, the butterfly up on the gyrocopter. That definitely helps him. But his BKB is now on cooldown, and that doesn't really help him because the BKBs are still online. And we're running for a Dusa, or at least off cooldown, that is. Let's see how far they get. BKBs already turned on. Gyrocopter already dead. They doomed up the OD who's trying to run for his life. Fisher will try to help out, but he is still doomed, and he will still go down. Double kill for half heart. Dragon tail for Big Num. Big Num dead as well. Ranged Rex and melee Rex will get dropped. Nyx Assassin, the only one that's very low. And he is still alive and kicking for now. And they'll just rotate and see if they can get somewhere with this next set of Rex. Earthshaker still dropping the fishes. That was a buyback for Big Num. Landing some Shakram, seeing if he can force him back with that, but he can't. Dusa, they've smelled blood and they want to continue getting some more. Hex up for Big Num, they know they can take him down as well. In comes the nuke and that is Visage with a kill. Obi Wan Banan goes down as well. Double kill for the Visage. Capron, he even have a very has a very strong soul assumption ready. Well, not anymore, he got ticked down, but he is dominating right now. He has not died yet a single time this game. His 10 to 0 to 9. He has been in 9 or 19 out of the 27 kills. And he is the only one in this game that hasn't died yet. He has the most skills of everybody. This is a fat visage, people. No, at least there, the Shaker was able to get the next assassin. In comes a cooldown as well. Have heart. In a lot of trouble again. Rocks out of range of the tower, though, and they don't have detection, actually, they do. And the Sentry Ward is there, but he runs away anyway. He is home safe. Still had a BKB just in case. We have a Death Letter picked up by the. Ooh, relocate? Nah. By the Nature's Prophet, I was gonna say. Looks like Visage should be able to get himself out there. Will they actually be able to kill him off for the first time? No, in comes the Nature's Prophet. Sprouts up just for the vision or maybe for the block. Judo gets himself stunned up. Re relocate, goes home without him. Now he's forced to turn on his BKB. He tries to run for it. It is the Earthshaker that's trying to make him... Uh, well, trying to buy an exit for him. It's the Timber Cell that does the same thing. And that's Nature's Prophet Ultimate. That just picked up both of the heroes and a triple kill. And that's a GG in uh, Russian, I was gonna say, but that's also a GG in English right there. That triple kill for Nature's Prophet, that ultimate, just gets it done. Capron not dying the entire game, Dusa getting the win, and that means that we're gonna see Dusa up against the next team, the team that we have seen already earlier today, and that was a priest. So that is Sharfik, Go Audio, Ink Visitor, and two that you might not recognize. But uh, we are going to be right back with the next game, so stick around. Let's see if I can find some hotkeys to cancel the, or to stop this game. I'm going to just try him. Oh, this is the wrong one. <laughs> 